My name is Val Mantuki. I'm fortunate to be the Chair of the Expert Mechanism on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I'm also a Professor of Law at the University of Waikato in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm an Indigenous woman from, from New Zealand and I represent the Pacific. As Chair of AMRIP and an Indigenous representative from the Pacific, what are the key challenges that Indigenous peoples are facing in your region and how can Indigenous peoples' food and knowledge systems provide solutions or insights of these challenges? Yeah, thank you. So, Indigenous peoples share common challenges and commonalities within the Pacific because uh, we are, are the Pacific. We're more vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. So that, you know, rising tides, uh, erosion, loss of potable uh, drinking water. And that, that's a, a real challenge for us in the Pacific. The main challenge is that of climate change uh, because it's, we are the most vulnerable to those adverse effects of climate change. And how do we ameliorate that? We ameliorate that by implementing an indigenous worldview so our worldview is connected to who we are as peoples, to our, the lands, territories, resources, and also our, our moana. That provides us with an ability to understand the changes, the subtle changes in the environment where we can react to. So for instance, when we harvest our, our kaimoana, we harvest our kaimoana when there are certain plants flower, when that season changes, we then understand that there will be changes in terms of rising sea levels. Thank you. As an example. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a question about your work with AMRIP. Uh, what, what are the initiatives or the actions that AMRIP is undertaking to ensure that indigenous peoples' collective rights to lands, territories and natural resources are respected? It's really difficult for Indigenous peoples to have their rights to the lands, territories and resources meaningfully recognised, even though that's a fundamental right, a key right actually within the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. How do Indigenous peoples acquire a meaningful recognition of lands, territories and resources in a number of different ways? On the expert mechanism, we have just finished a report that unpacks Article 38, which is really speaks to the recognition of constitutions and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Now, this might be a long way of saying it, but if that fundamental right to lands, territories and resources is incorporated within respective constitutions, then that provides a higher level of recognition or onus on the state to provide that right to Indigenous peoples. So... Our recent study on Article 38 of the Declaration I would consider as helpful in terms of realising that fundamental right. Thank you. <coughs> now, one question about on the Global Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, how can the Global Hub on Indigenous Peoples' food systems, how can it enhance the collaboration and uh, get insights on the solutions to address food insecurity and climate change? So this is my first time at the Global Hub and I consider the Global Hub as a unique environment that is conducive to knowledge sharing for Indigenous and non-Indigenous academics and civil society. There are like three points I'd like to make in terms of the Global Hub. First of all is that it provides an environment where Indigenous, people, Indigenous peoples feel really comfortable and that's important for us. So the tent is helpful because that's like for us like a world, a world in balance. The fire is also um, a metaphoric understanding or recognition of Indigenous peoples and also the food is also instrumental for us as Indigenous peoples. So that's important. The second point I wanted to make in terms of how effective the global hub is, is the participation, right? So you have participation and contribu contributions from every 
each one of the seven socio-cultural regions, you have Indigenous youth, you have academics, you have civil society, um, and, and non-state actors. So because we have that level of participation in the Global Hub, in and of itself, demonstrates how important the Global Hub is for advancing the what the Global Hub seeks, seeks to achieve. So it's not just the uh, wide-ranging participation, it's the environment that uh, Indigenous peoples feel comfortable. And those, those two points collectively, I suppose, um, encourage Indigenous peoples to be forthcoming with ideas, solutions and knowledge and more than that feel really comfortable in sharing, in sharing them to try and ameliorate those adverse effects of climate change, to find ways and solutions to recognise their food systems. And what I really like about the, the Global Hub is that it's an Indigenous food system and that Indigenous starting point is really meaningfully recognised and that's, you don't see that a lot across, across the UN. So I think that is really a really valuable and a unique environment for Indigenous peoples to share knowledge. Thank you. Is that it? Um, what strategies can we implement to guarantee that technological advancements and innovations yeah. are accessible, equitable, and advantages for indigenous peoples while also respecting their cultures, knowledge systems and rights? I'd have to answer that through the lens of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And I think that, and this ties with the study on Article 38 of the Declaration, if these fundamental rights are meaningfully recognised within respective jurisdictions, then issues that come up like um, benefit sharing, like understanding where that idea has come from or intellectual property. If, if the declaration was recognised, then there would be no issue in terms of technological advances um, being meaningfully recognised for Indigenous peoples. But I think what what is important and probably uh, needs a bit more work is the, the political will to embrace and to embrace Indigenous peoples and those fundamental rights within the Declaration. And if they did, I think it'd be a great thing. Thank you, Valmaine. One very last uh, question. Sure. Very, very last. Easy yeah. one. Can you share with us one or two key messages or strong messages about Indigenous peoples' rights? In my language, I say kia kaha, which is have strength. So, yeah, just kia kaha.